seems to me that the realistic position is that we have made a significant strides in the struggle for racial justice, but that we have a long, long way to go before the problem is solved. So as I think about the civil rights movement and as I think about the future of integration, I would like to use this realistic position as the basis for our thinking together. We have come a long, long way, but we still have a long, long way to go before we have a truly integrated and just society. Now let us know this first, we've come a long, long way. And I would like to point out here that the Negro himself has come a long, long way in re-evaluating his own intrinsic work. But if we're to be true to the facts, it is necessary to point out that the whole nation has made strides in extending the frontiers of democracy, the frontiers of civil rights. And there are many things that I can say at this point. Time will only permit me to mention one basic change that we have seen over the last 10 or 12 years. We have seen an absolute crumbling of the system of legal segregation which pervaded so much of the South and many of the border states for so many, many years. We all know the long history of the system of segregation. It had its legal beginning in 1896. And the Supreme Court rendered a decision known as the Presley versus Ferguson decision. This decision established the doctrine of separate but equal as the law of the land. Now, of course, we all know what happened as a result of the Fletcher Doctrine. That was always the strict enforcement of the separate without the slightest intention to abide by the equal. Negro ended up being plunged into the abyss of exploitation where he experienced the bleakness of nagging injustice. But something else happened. It was on May 17, 1954. On that day, after examining the legal body of segregation, the United States Supreme Court pronounced the constitutionally dead said in substance that the old press doctrine must go, that separate facilities are inherently unequal, that to segregate a child on the basis of his race is to deny that child equal protection of the law. Now, after that legal turning point, we notice the psychological turning point where people by the thousands began to act started engaging in direct action in order to fulfill the real ends expressed in the legal turning point. So that was the first part of Montgomery, Alabama in 1956, where 50,000 Negroes decided that it was ultimately more honorable to walk the streets in dignity than to accept segregation and humiliation in the midst of the conditions of life. And then in 1960, the student movement came into being, the sit-in movement. By the thousands, students and adults sat in at lunch counters in order to protest segregated conditions. When they sat in at those lunch counters, they were in reality 